My name is Alexi. I'm here with Sophia. Sophia, could you introduce yourself? Yes. Hello. Thank you, Alex, for the invitation. Um, uh, I am a, a classical, I met a professor in uh, modern Greek, but my studies were in classical studies. That means that I did ancient Greek, Latin, literature, history, and now I am focused the last uh, years, I am focusing on modern Greek and teaching um, uh, students that the, the uh, Greek is not uh, their native language. So I deal with people that they are from America, from all over the world, by doing online lessons in modern Greek. All right, so we're going to be continue watching Stan, the guy with a PhD in uh, Greek New Testament. So we'll see mm -hmm. how the second part going to go. So let's okay, watch Okay, great. So let me, let me do the screen share real quick. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's let's play it. And uh, now let us talk about the Greek diphthongs. A diphthong is a combination of two vowels which make one syllable. There are proper and improper diphthongs. First, let us talk about the proper diphthongs. And we will begin by reviewing the Greek vowels. There are seven vowels in Greek alphabet and uh, there are two types of them, uh, the short ones and the long ones. So uh, the first four comes in pair. This is the E class vowels, they give us the sound E. And this is the O class vowel, they give us the sound O. So Epsilon and Omicron are always short, Eta and Omega are always long, and Alpha, Iota and Upsilon can be both, either short or long. In the old days, in the ancient days, the Greeks pronounced these letters based on their length. But today that difference is lost. So the difference between the long and the short vowels is simply grammatical. So we pronounce them the same. We do not uh, worry how long they are. So the proper diphthongs are the combination of the short vowels and the letters Yota and Upsilon. There are only seven proper diphthongs in Greek. Let us take a look at them. So, did he said it correct? Okay. Yeah, these are the <laughs> these are the vowels, of course. Uh, this is what we have also in modern Greek. Um, okay. Um, now in the modern Greek, we don't pay attention about uh, how long or short is the sound. Um, actually the first two what he represent as short ones uh it doesn't matter anymore in modern greek we just uh, don't have like a e or o long sounds we just have a e and o which is the first uh, two vowels the other two it's e and o how we pronounce it in modern greek and again we we don't make a long sound like e or o we, we just have a normal sound like e and o we don't care about this thing anymore and the other three, again, it's like A, E, and E in modern Greek. Um, anymore, we don't have this thing. And, um, you know, it's uh, hard to say. I mean, it's difficult to say if it's really this, what it was happening in ancient Greek. I mean, it was really a short, uh, a short sound. It was really a long uh, sound. I mean, anymore, it doesn't uh, pay so much attention. I mean, in modern Greek, we don't have it this anymore. I mean... Okay. Yeah, okay. it's kind of weird, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see how Stan would pronounce mm -hmm. some of the diphthongs. Yeah, sure. Y Oops. and Upsilon. There are only seven proper diphthongs in Greek. And uh, the first diphthong we're going to talk uh, about is the diphthong I. It gives us the sound I as in the word isle. And the Greek example is the word Ion. Ion, this is our diphthong. I thought it was <laughs> Aeon. I mean, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, it's uh, Aeon. You know, by here, this Aeon, I felt a little uh, like this in my heart. <laughs> 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 like a small like this. <laughs> uh, oh my God, no, no, no. Um, you know, the the what it would be nice from him to give us an explanation about is that, okay, okay, this is a diphthong and it's pronounced Aeon. I mean, why it's a diphthong then? Then it, they are two separate letters, right? I mean, it's uh, a diphthong. 
is supposed to give uh, like uh, one sound or something different. I mean, and this is exactly what is happening in modern Greek. This is what he represents as I. We have it as E, because I mean, he could use the E letter if he, I mean. Uh, I, I try to, to understand how, wh how, what is his uh, uh, definition for uh, diphthongs. I mean, it's something that you combine the two vowels, that was correct what he said, but it's supposed to create a new sound, you know, not ion. I mean, there are two different letters. I mean, it's not a diphthong anymore. I don't know, it uh, sounds weird, yeah. Yeah, it's basically a combination, like for example, in English yeah. we have TH, like this, we don't say mm. his. We say Bravo, this. Ne, exactly. it's just ne, a basically ne. combination. It's, I ne. mean, and, it's you, and you, it's creating a new and something new, a new sound, right? I mean, to, uh, the T and H, they create this the sound. I mean, this is the thing. Here is just you. You hear two different letters. You don't hear a combination. You know. Yeah. He, how how he say? Mm -hmm. I, I I mean, like uh, for simplicity's sake, like if I would try to explain somebody, like about diphthongs, I would just say like diphthongs are basically combinations just like we have in yeah, English exactly. like mm -hmm. double O we don't say ro root we say root so mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like that but I mean it's it's beautiful to watch <laughs> but, yeah. let's let's, <laughs> but let's continue to watch yeah. song I, I, on uh, this word means age the second diphthong is oi, it gives us the sound oi as in the word oil. The Greek example is the word oinos, oinos meaning wine. Kakos? Oi, kakos. <laughs> oi, oinos? No, 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 in, no. <laughs> no, that's, no. The, that's not even a combination, he just oi. It's a, I, uh, no, it's like the previous one. It's just two, two sound, two different sounds, two different letters. I mean, there is not a combination here. I mean, uh, no, no. Again, I think it's happening the same thing. Like, ah, we have oil in English. Ah, so this is similar to this uh, diphthong in Greek. I mean, yeah, okay. something like that I get here. Yeah. All right. Let's continue watch his yeah. diphthongs or combinations mm -hmm. for simplicity's sake. The next diphthong is A. It gives us the a. sound A as in the word eight. And the Greek example is the word hair, hair, hand. The next diphthong. That you said it. Okay. Um, ha hair, hair. Okay. At least he should pronounce it with the accent correct, like hair, at least, huh? because the. the the, the stress is in the E there, in the I, whatever. Anyway, okay, let's uh, don't focus on that. Uh, okay, you know, I, I see again in the English example, like eight. Okay, so this A, uh, it's similar to this, uh, to this combination that they used to have back then in ancient Greek. Uh, no, 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 it's not what diphthongs are meant to be. I mean, it's a combination. And uh, that needs that means that they create a new sound. So this is pronounced as here in modern Greek, at least anyway. <laughs> All right, let's see the other combination. Yeah. Song is the diphthong ui. It gives us uh, the similar sound uh, with the word queen, but not exactly like queen because queen gives us the sound uin, and this is the diphthong ui. Four of these diphthongs give us similar uh, pronunciation. I, I, oi, a, and ui. So the uh, Greek example is the word huios. This is our diphthong, huios, meaning sun. I thought it was eos. Mm, me too. This is what I knew <laughs> until now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> My whole world is changing, I think, I guess. Uh, okay, um, and uh, I didn't get why why this uh, ui whatever it's it's not similar to this queen. I didn't get that. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know why, why well he because he doesn't bit. know uh, neither Greek nor English. That's why. Uh, <laughs> Seems to me it's know, like yeah. yeah I mean, okay, sad to say, okay. but all right. Yeah. Well, let's see the next one. Mm. A very good word to remember. 
The next diphthong is au. It sounds similar to the word maus. Au, maus. Ow. The Greek example is the word paulos. Pa I thought it was uh, av, avto, like avto, this, you know, it's like avtos, uh, he, like stuff like that. Look, but... this diphthong, this diphthong is what he says as au or whatever. Ow. Yes, sometimes it's an af with f, af. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's an av. In this particular, particular example, with v, Pavlos. It's, uh, it has to do with what letter is after. There is a grammatical rule for that. Um, so, um, okay, au, I guess because it's, um, it's continuing the same uh, structure from the <laughs> previous uh, diphthong. So, again, it's something separate. You don't feel that there is a combination again here. Um, so, okay, I'm curious. Ones, I guess something similar I can predict, like a, a, u, e, u, something like that. Huh? Yeah, the next <laughs> word have a, yeah. a very interesting surprise too. So I'm oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Paulos, meaning Paul. And uh, the next two diphthongs do not have any equivalent in English, but they are pronounced oh. the same. Eu, eu, the Greek example. Oh, there is so not an English sound. Why? We c he couldn't think of something really. They are the other things they are coming from English. <laughs> Diphthongs. These two, no? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. We can accept it. Okay. Uh, let's hear how he pronounced no. mm -hmm. uh, Vasile uh, Vasilevos. Vas Vasil how you pronounce this uh, correctly? Vasilev with Vasilevs. Say again because we have this. Uh, what's the Because there is a nest. Vas Vasilevs. 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 With F in the end. Vasilevs. Okay, let's hear how our uh, mm -hmm. PhD in Greek stand will say it. Examples are Basileus, King, and Heuron. Mm -hmm. I found. This last diff. Bas Basileu Basileus. H how did he say it? Let's hear it again. Uh, Basileus, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once again, it's Vita, not Beta. It's just. No, no. Let's hear yeah, it again. Yeah, we talked about. Yeah, let's, let's hear it again just to make sure mm -hmm. how you said it. Ne. Eu, Eu. Ah. The Greek examples are Basileus, King, and Heuron. I found. Heuron? I thought it was Eron. E, Eron. Oh, how no, this is pronounced Ivron. Ivron. Oh, yeah, that's Ivron. right. Yep. Yeah. Ivron. Uh, but, um, okay, he put, a, he put a slight H before this, like he, he, he Ron, something H. But did he say that this letter, whatever he represents as E, this is the first one anyway, that's, that is Ita in modern Greek. I mean, he didn't even say that there is a H before it. Let me put it again one moment, and you'll hear. You'll yeah, hear let's, it. Let's see. English, but they are pronounced the same. Eu, eu. The Greek examples are Basileus, King, and Heuron. I found. Heuron, Heuron. Heuron. Where, where, did, where is this H? The H sound came from. This I don't, I don't. Know. Um, actually, um, in a, like I noticed back then when I was studying Erasmus nonsense, I noticed like mm -hmm. hypocrite or like for example Hermes. Uh, nah. they would, mm -hmm. For some reasons, they would add H where H is not present. I mean, it's nowhere to be found. I mean, yeah, but uh, here, I mean, it's uh, okay. Maybe in English we say, let's say, Hipp Hippocrates or Her Hermes or whatever. We put, we say it in English, but uh, here it's a Greek word. I mean, it's it's an ancient Greek word. This one. Why he put an a H sound before of it? I mean. Uh, because, anyway, I mean, when, you know, I, when I do have a, some kind of, I guess, conspiracy theory. I don't know oh. how in America, but in Russia, like, for example, we have so many classes, let's just say 15 classes a week. And sometimes mm -hmm. we had only like one student who would do homework for everybody. And he would probably make it on like <laughs> a C or maybe B, uh, maybe but everybody would just copy from each other without okay, investigating then, then. and seems mm -hmm. like what in america has happened is that 
uh, uh, pretty much you have one professor or maybe two professors who pretty much copied from each other and they decide to teach the same thing without checking with Greeks because to them Greeks kind of like it's kind of hilarious Greeks don't really know Greek you know to them to their perspective oh. yeah yeah that's I think it's American thinking uh, I kind of noticed on else on a pre-ply there was a okay. Amer American guy who would mm -hmm. charge $60 an hour to teach somebody Russian and he actually changed his uh, video intro on preply where he would no longer speak uh, even one word in Russian. It was kind of, yeah. How yes. he teach Russian then? Huh? How he teach Russian then if he cannot speak Russian? No, I mean he speak, but on a video he doesn't say because in previous video ah, okay. he mm. did one sentence and now can already hear like his bad oh, accent that's, um, and like mm. um. Uh, in okay. Russian we have he L it. yeah, and he changed it because like in uh, Russian we also have masculine, feminine, and neuter, and mm -hmm. he pronounced like a neuter, like for example, uh, я пошел it's masculine, я пошла mm -hmm. is uh, feminine, я пошло mm -hmm. is neuter, like okay. if you know any Russian and he just uh, used the neuter sound for himself when he's a male. So uh, mm. imagine, imagine okay. like uh, uh, I don't know how to explain like um, I, I think you mean like, his accent wasn't very correct when he pronounced uh, when he was talking in Russian. No, no, his he used the correct. wrong form. He used the ah, wrong okay, form. Ah, okay, okay. He used the neuter, neuter, ne, uh, ne. Uh, what's some uh, verb instead of a mm -hmm. masculine verb. Instead mm -hmm, of pas mm -hmm. ya pashol, he used. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Pashlo, yeah, which is new. Yeah. Ne, ne, I got so. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. let's continue watch. Uh, it's not well, a Well, I observed something else as well with this. But how he say this? Basile, Basileus, Basi. He he put a, a, a z z sound, and you can check it also if you put to hear it. And he tell he told us that this is a s, like a sigma, right? It's not a z or whatever. So I kind of feel like there is a, again this how how an English or a non Greek speaker will would read this like Basileus because it's it's easier it's more easy for him to read it like this I guess so mm, we're yeah. not so sure about this yeah so let's continue watching this mm -hmm. this last diphthong starts with a long vowel but it is still considered the proper diphthong. Uh, there is a variation of how to pronounce these two diphthongs. Some pronounce them as U and they say there is an example in English the word feud and uh, then they would pronounce this word as Basileus, Basileus a king and Huron, Huron I found. In this course I will pronounce them as EU uh, because uh, the previous diphthongs is pronounced as au, so it is logical to pronounce this one as eu, eu. So just remember there is a variation of pronunciation right here. In this course I will pronounce them as eu. So a little nuance about diphthongs. If uh, an accent in a word falls on a diphthong, it will be written above the second letter, but we still pronounce the diphthongs uh, with the stress on the first letter. Let us practice reading them again. I, oi, a, ui, au, eu, eu. Do you think you can read this? That's oh. why. That's why he, he read that word like hair. And that was my question. Like why? Because the accent is in E. Why he don't pronounce hair? And the, that that was the explanation what he gave now. That he, he keep the accent to the first letter, whatever. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Let him keep the A and E because the second variation was way worse. Okay. <laughs> this A and E, I'd let him keep this at least. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, no. Okay. We said we talked about it. In modern Greek, there is not such a thing. And we can never know, I think. Okay. I am not so, you know, I didn't 
study like uh, mainly on the accent that they, were, they had in ancient Greek, but we can never be sure about it for sure. What we have now is modern Greek, what we speak and it's a living language. So these diphthongs are e, 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 af or av, depending on the letter, f or ev again. And the last one is uh, not anymore in modern Greek. There is not a word with this kind of diphthong anymore. Um, so um, I'm very curious to see what he will tell us next. <laughs> Uh, let's, see. let's look at a few examples. For example, the word Basileus has a, an accent right here, which falls on the diphthong. And as you can see, it is written above the second letter in the diphthong. But we do not pronounce this word as Basileus. Basileus, no. We pronounce it as Basileus. Basileus. Another example is the word Paulus. We have another type of accent right here, but it is still uh, written above the second letter in the diphthong. So we do not pronounce this word as Paulos. Paulos. No. We still say Paulos. Paulos. Another good example is the word Oinos. It has both the accent and a breathing mark, and we're going to talk about them in a few minutes. And both of them are written above the second letter in the diphthong, but we still pronounce it as oinos, oinos. So just remember that if the accent falls on the diphthong, it will be written above the second letter, but we still stress the first letter. And uh, now let us look at the improper diphthongs. Ah, that was the proper, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's hear some improper diphthongs. Ah, okay. Improper okay. combinations for once mm. again for mm -hmm. people who actually want to learn the real Greek at preply.com, yeah. guys. Preply.com. I'll post the link at, uh, below the video. But okay. let's continue. Yeah. Okay, this is going to sound a little okay. nuts, so but I the fastest this. and easiest way to make passive online income on Amazon. The improper diphthongs are even easier. It is a combination of a long vowel, alpha, eta, or omega, and the smallest letter in the Greek alphabet, iota. In this case, iota is so afraid of these long vowels that it jumps under the line and sits there very, very quietly. It is called iota subscript, and uh, sub means under, script means written, so written under, and again remember, it is silent, we just ignore it when it comes to pronunciation. So instead of saying I, A, or OI, we just say A, E, and O. Let us take a look at a few examples. Did he, uh, did he say it correctly? Okay, look, this thing anymore, it doesn't, we don't have it in modern Greek anymore, but uh, the, it, uh, it, was, uh, it was really happening in ancient Greek. Um, the thing is, it's true that it's something silent and it doesn't, uh, it didn't affect the pronunciation. Uh, but okay, again, we have, uh, he used the way of pronunciation, what uh, he knows anyway, that it's the truth. Uh, so it's A, E, and O, this, uh, these uh, sounds here and uh, okay at least I, I, I'm happy at least that he said that this is something silent because uh, this is what we thought uh, of the professors are thinking anyway about this kind of letters yeah okay mm -hmm. let's see the next mm -hmm. and the first word we're going to read today is the word basileia we have two diphthongs here the first one is a proper diphthong a and uh, this is our improper diphthong. This is our iota subscript. Let's read it together. Basileia. No, Basileia. no. Let's not read it again. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, let's not read it like this. No, no. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, for those no. who have not seen the first part, uh, once again, it's not beta, it's vita and pronounces V. Uh, mm -hmm. so it's a Vasile, a Vasile, and Vasile. No. How, how would you Vasilia. say? Vasilia. 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 This is a e sound that to there the oh, diphthong yeah. there. It's Vasilia. an e sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vasilia. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's hear the the next mm -hmm. word. How would you pronounce pronounce the next word? Uh, graphi. Graphi. Oh, okay. 
but let's make a let's make a guess grafe or something let's uh, see okay. <laughs> yeah probably the next word is grafe this is our iota uh. hidden right there grafe grafe scripture mm. and uh, the last example n to cosmo we have two iota ah, something that sounds normal n to cosmo yes th this is it yeah he should speak only with O sound, this guy, and he will be correct. <laughs> All right, he finally cosmo. got it right. Yes, PhD yes, there is, a, there is a been correct there. Yeah. Teaching for seven years, he finally got something <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, let's... that's good. That was good. Yeah, good All for right. him. Yeah. Kalos, Kalos. <laughs> Kalos, yes. Finally, we say Kalos, yeah. All right. Let's hear the next. First and the second. N to. Cosmo, in the world. Hmm. And uh, the last little nuance we need to learn about the diphthongs, it is a digraph U, it is not a diphthong O, it is a digraph U, it gives us one sound U, as in the word boutique, or the word soup, and the Greek example is the word Iesus, Iesus, me. By the way, can you can you explain the difference between diphthong and digraph? Um, actually, digraph it uh, means digramma. In I mean, it's uh, from the Greek word digramma. That means like two letters, diogramma, two letters. Mm, to be honest, uh, maybe what he means is that uh, vowel, the uh, diphthongs are combination of vowels. I think that the digram, it's uh, the combination of the consonants, like two consonants together. For example, we have a me and p, and they make the b sounds together. So this is a digram, digraph. I mean, two letters that they, but it's, they are, con they are uh, consonants, not vowels this time. But here, it's uh, very, very weird that these are vowels here, I mean, this, this is considered to be a diphthong in, a, in modern Greek. And also I'm very surprised that he, he, that he read it as an O, how we still do it in modern Greek. And why he don't say O, <laughs> I mean, like the previous ones, like uh, eh, au, eh, whatever it was, au, eu, and so on. I, I don't know why, why he keep that like this. I mean, maybe because in Jesus it will sound weird to say Jesus or something, I don't know. <laughs> You know, to not uh, to not sound weird, the name of the god, but I I really don't know here what is happening. I mean, oh, ooh, it's a diphthong because they, these two they are vowels, these two letters, and this should it should be a diphthong. I I don't know, I don't know what's happening here. All right, let's see it. Yeah. Meaning, Jesus. Jesus. We are almost at the end of our lesson, but we still need to cover three very important elements. Breathing marks, accents, and the punctuation signs. In order to explain this part of the lesson, I am going to use my whiteboard. If a word in Greek starts with a vowel, diphthong, or a letter rho, it should have a breathing mark. And there are two types of breathing marks in Greek, the rough one, and the smooth one. And the smooth one looks exactly like a comma, and the rough one looks like a reverse comma. And uh, the breathing marks are written above the first letter of a Greek word, and the rough one indicates that that first letter will have an initial H sound. And the smooth one indicates that that H sound is absent. Now let us look at a few examples and practice reading Greek words which have the breathing marks. Did he say it correctly or is it something? Actually, yes, this is happening. I mean, in, uh, not in modern Greek anymore, of course, because we don't have any more this kind of breathing marks uh, written in the words, but uh, <clears throat> it's really happening in the ancient Greek. I mean, you can see also if you check uh, any ancient text, you can see these uh, marks and they are really, they're supposed to help uh, to be like uh, helpful for uh, the breathing while you while you are talking, so this is yeah this can be true yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's can, let's see what he have 
for us as story. And uh, the first word which we will read today is the word aner, a man, a husband. When it comes to reading Greek... Aner, correct? Um, no. <laughs> anir. 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 Yeah. Yep. Mm. All right. Let's. Yes. Uh, mm. By the way, uh, for those who want to study Greek, could you explain mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, I guess, comma and this actually accent right there for for people? Yeah, this is uh, anyway in modern Greek. Uh, this uh, this like l that looks like a comma. It doesn't affect anymore the pronunciation. I mean, even he said that it was only for uh, breathing. Uh, for breathing thing anyway, but while you are talking, just to help you, you know, or make a mold to take a, a rough breath or a, like, anyway, it's something that doesn't affect anymore the modern Greek. So the accent is what it's, that we still have in modern Greek. So uh, where you where you see the accent, this is where you have to put your uh, pressure, like anir, it's not anir, it's anir because the, there is the accent. So this uh, <clears throat> this stress over there is where you have to to check uh, actually the other things like uh, this is what looks like a comma we doesn't we don't have it anymore in modern Greek only in ancient. Okay, what does that actually this means like this? Um, like? <clears throat> actually, it's uh, about um, about the breathing. I'm not sure if it was like uh, like to to take a small like a small break like a. Ah, uh, ah, uh, near like uh, it's about the breathing that I'm not so sure because uh, we we can, we don't speak ancient Greek and we don't know how they were how when why they are using it. I mean, why it was so important for them to show it. So it's it has to do about the the breath that you take while you are saying this or while you are reading this word. So it's um, it's not it's not something familiar to us anymore for modern Greeks. So it's. It's something that it's left behind. We don't we don't care about this so much anymore. Okay. And okay. I don't think either. I mean, it's uh, no one has to give so much attention. Things things are way way simple. The anir. I mean, this is uh, this is it. You don't have to be like to take a breath, to not to take a small breath, a rough breath, or something like that. It, it is, it's way more simple than that. <laughs> this is the point. What's the next uh, word? How would you say it? Imera. 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 Mm -hmm. Is it uh, similar to modern word? Uh, was it? Uh, what's, what does it mean? Imera means day, day or morning. Day. It can be. Yeah. We have it as Kalimera to no, no, good no. morning, uh, day or morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's hear how he said it. Greek, uh, we need to pronounce every single letter as we see it in a word. So let's first name every letter in this word. Alpha, Nu, Eta, Rho. And these four letters give us four sounds. A, N, E, R, Aner, Aner. As you can see, we have the smooth breathing mark right here above the letter Alpha. And the smooth breathing mark means that uh, there is no extra uh, pronunciations, extra sounds uh, which we need to add to this uh, alpha. We read it as a, aner, aner. In the second example, we have the rough breathing mark, the reverse comma, which means that we need to bring the sound h before, before uh, this uh, letter. Eta. First, let's name every letter in this word. Eta, mu, epsilon, rho, alpha. And uh, we receive five sounds. E, m, e, r, a. But we do not read this word emera, emera. Because of this rough breathing mark, we need to bring the sound h in front of uh, this uh, eta. Hemera, hemera. It's Kali Hemera to you. Kali <laughs> Hemera. Yeah. No, it's a Kaki. It's a Kaki Mera. Kaki Mera. Because it's not Kali. It's not Kalos. Kalos. It's Kakos. Kaki Mera for me today. Uh, um, okay. You know, okay. Okay. The thing is that. Um, actually, I told you. I am honest. I, I didn't, you know. 
focus my studies on the on the pronunciation how where they had it back then in ancient times but i really have no idea where is this h comes from i mean uh, it comes <laughs> I really from erasmus don't know. I mean, it comes from erasmus no, no, no. I, I don't know i mean it's uh, i don't know I mean, because, uh, okay, I can understand there is a logic like, uh, you know, the name uh, Eleni and we have it Helen. Huh, there is a huh, uh -huh. you know, I mean, and this is, I, I guess this happened, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, it, maybe there are uh, uh, things about in, in English that uh, do this change from Eleni to Helen or something like that. Or we, that you, what you said about Hermes, Hermes, and we have it Hermes, Hermes with A. Mm -hmm. I mean, they add this huh sound. But... Or oh, Hercules, Heracles. Bravo, uh, ne, Heracles, ne, Heracles and Hercules. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But uh, the thing is that, uh, did this H begin from ancient Greek or it was something that happened I from English? I mean, I, I don't know. No, I it's actually I Dutch know. guy by the name Erasmus. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Erasmus then, not Erasmus. Erasmus. Oh, Heras <laughs> Probably, no? Okay, <laughs> I guess so, yeah. you know, hey. He wants no, to why he didn't another in his name, yeah. Herasmus, no? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah. All right, uh, let's hear what, uh, how would you uh, read this, I guess, line uh, below uh, three this words? This is either, either. This means water, either. Uh -huh. uh, this is Rima, Rima. Mm -hmm. And the next one is Eromenos, Eromenos. Okay. Let's see what we will hear. There are two ways how uh, you could pronounce this um, uh, rough breathing mark. Some people give it a deeper pronunciation, kind of rougher pronunciation, which comes from the depth of your lungs. And I prefer softer pronunciation. So throughout this course, I will use the softer pronunciation. Um, let's look at uh, a few more examples. If uh, Greek words starts with the letter Upsilon or a letter Rho, they will always have the rough breathing marks. All right. And uh, this is the word Hudor. Hudor. Uh, remember, this is the rough breathing mark. We bring the H sound. It's not Udor. Udor. It is Hudor. Hudor. <laughs> what would be your reaction? <laughs> oh my oh, wow. god, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, imagine, okay, le yours, uh, your native language is Russian, right? Yes. I mean, ne imagine to see Russian things written and someone else to read them in a very, like, weird way. You're like, oh my god, I mean, this is my language. What is happening to my language? I mean, it's, it's very weird. I mean, H Hudor, okay. At least we, I, at least I try to, you know, okay, Udor, okay, Udor, okay, but Hudor, I mean, and also he used the, the more light way and it could be from the deep in, from my tongue, like Udor, how, how would I say that thing? Oh my God, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's, uh, they, they are very creative with this, uh, this Erasmus was very creative, very big imagination, you know, it's yeah. not either what I see in front of me either, it's Hudor. Or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So okay. So what he will say about the next one? He will say "hrima, hrima." He will put a "h" before of it. I I don't know. Let's see. I I, I don't know. All right. Let's hear what he has to say. <laughs> uh, the yeah. breathing mark above the letter "ro" is silent, so we read this word as "rema, rema." Ah. And uh, if two. Rema. Rima. Rima. Oh, oh, okay, you know what is happening here. Um, if you read it as Rima, how it is, Rima means uh, the word, like to, to speak, to say a word. Rima means the word. If you say Rema, Rema, it's uh, this, uh, you know, where, where the rivers, uh, they are uh, like a very, very wild, the river is coming. This is called the Rema. I mean, it's two different words if you read it as E or E, you know what I mean. So, I, I don't know. I mean, re, the actual word that it's Rema, there is a word Rema. How would he, what, how he will distinguish these two? You understand what I mean? 
it's uh, something is happening. I don't know. Uh, and I mean, I don't know why. Why here he didn't add, add this h chrima like before, like Hudor. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Why you know, now? Why it, now it's happening like this? Yeah, because they, this is a consonant, I guess. It's not. It's not a vowel, probably. But um, I don't know. Uh, ah. Kakos, kakos. That's all. Ka I can very say. kakos. No. All right. Let's hear it. No. Letters ro appear together. Both of them will have the breathing marks. Uh, one will be soft, and the second one will be always rough. But again, uh, the breathing marks above the letter RO are silent, so we do not pronounce them. Eromenos. 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 Uh, we need to pay attention to. Okay, <laughs> this was correct. That was correct. Eromenos. Yeah. Uh, so when it's one, r when it's one RO, we, we messed up. When it's two RO, we, we pronounce it correctly. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Okay. Right. So we so have until now the O, he pronounced it correct. This entocosmo, I remember. And this eromenos, because it's two R together. So we have two correct. It's good. Hmm? All right. Let's continue no. watching. To the breathing marks, mm -hmm. because they can actually change the meaning of uh, Greek words. For example, uh, there is a word N with a smooth breathing mark, which means in this is the preposition in and the same two letters with the rough breathing mark means and number means one. one another example is the one letter word with the rough breathing mark he he will mean the definite article the for the feminine nouns and kakos i kalos Look, he say correct that this that it's really happening that when you see this um, the examples what he give it's correct. Like the first one, it's really the preposition, and the other one n. And actually, we both we will read it as n. It's true now, um, um, but okay. I guess depending on the context where it was using, you can understand that ah, this is a preposition. Ah, this is the number one. Uh, so yeah, this is not uh, this is correct what he tried to say here. But okay, we don't agree with the way that he pronounced, especially this the second what he tried to say about what he say hey or something. I don't know. Uh, it's e this this sound anyway for the feminine the article for the feminine. Um, okay, yeah, it's not totally wrong what he tried to say here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue on. The same letter with the smooth breathing mark e will mean the word or so as you can see just the breathing mark can change the meaning of the word and uh, besides the breathing marks you already noticed that there are some other things uh, written above the words these are greek accents let us talk about them now let's talk about the accents there are three types of accents in Greek, the acute, the grave, and the circumflex accent. In the ancient times, they indicated the uh, rising and falling tone of a word. For example, the acute uh, indicated that the tone of a word was rising, the grave indicated that it was falling, and the circumflex accent indicated that first it was going up and then it would fall down. But in the modern pronunciation, that difference is lost. So for us, is that true? It's been lost. In a... Yes, yes, we don't. No, we don't pay attention to this anymore. We don't. We actually have only the first one. What he what he says acute or whatever. This is the first, the only accent that we have uh, in modern Greek and shows where you have to put your most power. This is the like the strongest syllable where you have to pronounce. Okay, mm -hmm. ah, let's continue. All three accents indicate the same that uh, the syllable upon which the accent falls should be stressed as we pronounce it, similar to English. Similar to and, English. Uh, now let's talk about... Yeah, nah, nah, similar to English. Uh, even in English, English i never seen anything like this in a modern English. I mean, I, I mean, uh. yeah, it's just 
it's just odd what he just said. Like maybe, well, like I said, it seems like he needs to study English <laughs> as well. <laughs> I mean, in English, you don't have, you have only the I that this is the letter from the letter. I mean, this kind of, uh, uh, it, it's not an accent, actually. It's the thing that the letter has, the I, but only there. I mean, there are no accents in English. Yeah. You just know how to pronounce. I mean, you know it. It's, yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, he needs to learn some English and he needs to learn some Greek. And he needs to refund mm. all the money of those people who pay him. <laughs> All the money for seven years of his teaching, he needs to refine, uh, refund. Otherwise, just making merchandise of God's people. But anyway, let's let's listen some of his kini not koine. <laughs> Is that he's gonna talk about punctu punctu punctuation mm -hmm. signs? Mm -hmm. The punctuation signs. There are four punctuation signs in Greek. The first ones are period and comma and they correspond to period and comma in English. The next one is a semicolon, which corresponds to a question mark in English. So every time you see the semicolon in the biblical text, it is actually a question mark in English, which indicates that that sentence in the Greek text is a question. And the last one is a colon, which is just a dot above the line, and it corresponds to a colon or a semicolon in English. Now, as we learned is all of- correct? Yes, yes, this is correct. Yeah, it's true. Okay. <laughs> Good, yes. all right, he got what, three things or four things right now? Uh, how, how could be wrong, who could be wrong about punctuation? At least, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, you see it, ah, oh, this is a dot. Okay, at least we have that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see it. Of the uh, rules of phonetics and pronunciation and punctuation in Greek, let's uh, look at a few examples and practice reading Greek words. Mm. And oh, uh, let's let's hear from you what are those words are. Okay. The first one is logos. Logos. That means the speech. Mm? Didaskalos, Didaskalos is the teacher, and Abraham is Abraham. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. they pronounce uh, Abram, Abram, actually, Abram. But okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hear it. Uh, the first uh, word we are going to practice reading today comes to us from our logo, from this upper corner, and this is a word logos, meaning word. This is our accent, which means that we will need to stress this letter, this syllable as we read it. First, let's name every letter in this word. Lambda, Omicron, Gamma, Omicron, Stigma. Now let's read it together. Logos, Logos, Logos. Ah, Correct. it's not the Logos, it's Logo, the Logo of a company, Logo or something. <laughs> I don't uh -huh. know, it's not, a, it's not Logos, huh? it's a uh, name. No. Okay, okay. It's the similar to English logo, what we have, the logo of a product, the logo of a company, logo. Huh? I mean, uh -huh. this is what it came to my mind now by hearing this thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Logos, a word. And the next word also comes to us from our logo. It is a word teacher. This is our accent right here. We'll need to stress this alpha. First, let's name every letter in this word. Delta, Yota, Delta, Alpha, Sigma, Kappa, Alpha, Lambda, Omicron, Stigma. Now let's read it. Didaskalos. Didaskalos. Mm -hmm. Okay, again we have the same thing. This is, uh, this is not a D, it's a D, it's a Delta, mm -hmm. D. He named it as Delta, I, re I still remember it. He named it as Delta, and after he said that this is a D sound. So, I mean, uh, at least at least he could say Delta, D, as a le at the letter, if you want to accept this kind of pronunciation. Anyway, this is dida Didaskalos, and okay, at least it doesn't sound uh, so, so weird like other what he read, so okay. If you want to stay with the D, okay, but uh, it's a the the sound nowadays at least. 
Okay. Let's mm-hmm. see it. Didaskalos, a teacher. And the last word is a pretty easy one. You can do it on your own. This is our smooth breathing mark. If a letter, if a first letter of a word is a capital letter, the breathing mark uh, shifts a little bit forward and is written in front of the first letter. This is our accent, so we'll need to stress this alpha as we read it. But first, let's name every letter here. Alpha, beta, rho, alpha, alpha, mu. Let's read it together. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. Yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Again, this uh, vita, that it's not a be- beta, beta, whatever, it's a vita. Mm? Abraham, but okay, uh, what to do? <laughs> this is Erasmus accent. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh my God. Abraham. Yeah. This concludes the grammar for the lesson one. Actually, there's a. And before we dive into it, I want we will ah, focus will on the correct the pronunciation there. of the Greek letters. Oh, could you read this for us before he reads it, just to check? <clears throat> Okay, panda dinata to pistevondi. Panda dinata to pistevondi. What does it mean? This means that uh, to those who believe, to pistevondi, the believers, uh, everything is possible. Panda dinata to pistevondi. All right, let's hear it from mm-hmm. Stan. And this text will help us to do that. And before we dive into it, I want to give you a minute to wrestle with the text yourself. So pause this video now and try to read it on your own. Uh We already wrestled it. No. (laughs) And we will begin with the first word. Let us name every letter here. P, Alpha, Nu, Tau, Alpha. Uh, And uh, these letters give us sounds P, A, N, T, A. This is our accent. We will need to stress uh, this syllable. Let's read it. Panta, panta, panta. The next word is... Panta? Yeah, like the animal, I guess. Panta. Panta. No, this uh, in modern Greek creates the D. The... um, so it's pan, panda, the panda. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Let's, let's hear the next Delta, one. Upsilon, nu, alpha, tau, alpha. Another accent. We will stress this alpha at the end. Let's read it. Du, na, ta. Du, na, ta. Du, na, ta. Okay. How would you say okay. this? The, the, nata, the, the, not, not, ju, ju, the, 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 nata. Okay, yeah. let's see the next. Du, nata. Mm-hmm. The next word has three letters, tau and omega. And we also have the yota subscript, which is silent. So these uh, letters give us the uh, sound t, o. We read this word as to. This is the definite ah. article. We will She's got this correct. This is to. It's to. Ne. Right. This is to. <laughs> yes. <Good job. laughs> yes. Uh, all right. And the last Study word. Study them in the lesson number ne. five. Mm-hmm. To. To. And uh, the last word is the longest word. Let's name every letter here. P, Yota, Sigma, Tau, Epsilon, Upsilon, Omicron, Nu, Tau, Yota. This is our accent. And here we have the proper diphthong EU. You see the accent is written about the second letter, but we stress it uh, here on the epsilon EU. Uh, so let's try to read half of this word. Pisteu, pisteu. Now let's add this suffix to it. Pisteuonti, pisteuonti, pisteuonti. Correct or incorrect? No. <laughs> How would you say uh, it? This is pistevondi, v, because after this diphthong there is a vowel, the o, so that means uh, by the grammatical rule that we have in modern Greek, that's a ev sound, pistevondi, and again it's a d, 
the knee and tap together. Okay. All no, right. only toe. We have toe at least. <clears throat> All right. Well, actually, that was the last sentence. Sentence in okay. Greek, and he goes into his uh, uh, with some uh, warlock or magi uh, scheme in the end. So, uh, but wow. yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, he's a warlock, uh, not even realizing because magi, like it is in in Kini Greek, as far as I know, it's like a warlock or male witch, like uh, in yeah. Matthew, where uh, they just transliterate in English magi came to see Jesus being uh, uh, after him being born and stuff. So, but anyway, okay. so. I'm going to stop our recording right now and um, I'll post a link to you, Sophia, on Preply. Mm -hmm. So if people would like to learn Greek directly from you, they'll be able yeah, to. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right.